Jay, uh, ESPN has uh, 10 Big Ten teams making the tournament field this year at this point. Uh, what do you feel the factors are for the league being this good this winter? Well, there's been continuity in coaches. Uh, so the coaches have been there for a period of time. And the Big Ten's always really good. Just it's unusual to have this sort of, of quality depth uh, where the, the league performed at such a high level in the non-conference. And then, uh, and then you know, er seemingly everybody, at least early on, protected their home course like you don't see very often. Uh, so it's been extraordinary. Um, you know, I'm not sure that the Big Ten, uh, one, th one, two, three at the top, is significantly better than the ACC or the SEC or things like that. But one through ten, uh, I don't think it's a, a close call. Uh, it's the best. It's the best league, top to bottom, and and by far the most competitive league. And that's that's clear from the number of number of teams that are, uh, you know, NCAA worthy at this point in the season. They even have ten in the game, uh, and it's actually probably eleven still have a chance. But to have ten in the game uh, heading into the the Big Ten tournament is really extraordinary. I mean, I think the record for the Big Ten is eight, isn't it? Uh, so to have ten is is really really says a lot about the the quality depth and and the quality of player in this league. Uh, and then, uh, and then I think I think though to answer your question, it, it comes from continuity of, of coaching. Jay, a, a, a Big Ten team hasn't won the uh, national championship since 2000. What do you sort of attribute that to? And do you think Maryland has what it takes to end that streak? Last part first: Does Maryland have the opportunity to win this year? Absolutely. Maryland's as good as anybody, and and can absolutely get to Atlanta and win once they're there. Uh, as to why uh, there hasn't been a, a championship since 2000, when Michigan State uh, beat Florida. Uh, the Big Ten's had a number of opportunities. There have been probably 13 Final Fours in that period, maybe 14, and a, a number, at least seven championship game appearances. So it has more to do with the, the particular opponent in a, in a given game or given year. Uh, you know, like Michigan State was in the championship game, I think, in 09, but they were playing North Carolina, which is a historically great team. So, uh, you know, you're playing somebody different, you got a, a great opportunity. Uh, but this year, um, there, I think I think most teams should look at this year, and it's been a really good year for for college basketball. But they should look at this year as maybe their best opportunity to win a championship. That that uh, there are a ton of really good teams, and I'm not one of those that believes that that anybody can win. Uh, I don't think that's true. I think what's been demonstrated is anybody can lose, uh, but it doesn't mean that that any team can win the whole thing. That's just not that's not my belief set. So what stands out to you about Maryland and makes you think you know they're capable of getting that far? Well, if you look historically at the, the teams that have won championships, <laughs> Maryland had, checks every box. Uh, they're very, very well coached. Uh, they have a, an outstanding point guard in Anthony Cowan. Uh, they have a, an outstanding big guy in Jalen Smith. And then they've got uh, a, a, an athletic, um, deep support, not deep, in, they're not deep right now because of injury and all that stuff. Uh, but they've got they've got quality players around those two, and uh, and that so they've got guys that can hit shots, that can get to the basket, they guard very well, and they've got a maturity and toughness about them that you don't see in every team. And you know, I, I think one of the measures, at least in my judgment, of of a, a quality basketball team that has a chance to win a championship is do they win when they don't play well? And Maryland has proven that they can do that. And there have been, what, three games where they've been down 14 or more and come back and won. And, uh, and you know, I'm sure if you asked, asked every Maryland player coach, would you like to be down 14 in those games, the answer would be no. But, but given that, that not everybody's going to play well in every game in the NCAA tournament, that you can win in those games and have the confidence to be able to do that, uh, I think that's a, that's a, a positive. Jay, it's been so long since College Game Day has been here in Maryland. What do you hope the country sees from this program that you've known from your experience playing against them and what they've done since 2005? Well, Maryland has always been a great program, uh, going back to Lefty Drizel and Cole Fieldhouse and all the you know all the great players that have played here and the great teams. Uh, I think I think a lot of people both uh, around this area and nationally have undervalued how difficult it is to go from one league to another at that level. So, you know, when you change from the ACC to the Big Ten, that is not an easy transition. And, uh, and I think Maryland's done a really good job uh, in making that transition. 
Uh, it changes recruiting. It change, every road trip is different. You don't have historic, uh, you know, sort of traditional rivalries. Uh, those were left in the past. And you can ask, ask Nebraska how it's been in football. It's difficult. Uh, but Maryland's navigated it very well. Uh, but this has always been a really passionate fan base. Uh, it is a difficult place to play, and uh, but it's a fun place to play. Uh, so you know if you've uh, if you come here and, and play well and can withstand what you're going to be called and here and all that stuff, you can uh, you know you can handle it anyway. If you can if you can play like, like think about New York, if you can make it in College Park, you can make it anywhere. What stands out from your time at Duke when you played here, and who were the great players you played against in Cole Fieldhouse? Uh, well, I mean, if you talk to a lot of people uh, that are old timers, they'll say the 1980s was probably the best time for the ACC. Um, I mean, you know, in a, I guess in a me first way, of course, I, I would look at it that way. So that's when I played. But when you came into Cole Fieldhouse back then and had to play against Len Bias and Adrian Branch and Keith Gatlin, and, uh, Herman Veal and Ben Coleman, uh, that was a rough crowd, man. Those guys were good. And I had to guard Ben Coleman, and it wasn't something I looked forward to because he was so good. Uh, and, you know, Bias was one of the great players, honestly, that's ever played in, in any in, in the ACC or any league. And uh, But I was actually just laughing with a teammate of mine recently about this, that, you know, back then you used to have alternating introductions before the game, before the game started. So when they announced the starting lineup, they would announce a player from one team and a player from the other team. And so you'd have to go out. If you were announced first, you'd have to hold your hand out while the other player came. And, and uh, Maryland used to do this, this thing. They would, they would take a swing at your arm. And uh, Ben Coleman would slap me in the forearm. And, uh, and it hurt. And so you'd, have, you know, you'd hold your hand out there and get slapped. And, uh, and then you'd have to try as hard as you could not to cry <laughs> and get back to your huddle. And during the ACC tournament in 84, if you go back and look at the tape, um, we pulled our hands back when they took a swing at us. And, uh, and Ben just stood there and stared at me after I ran back. Uh, so I don't know whether that's funny or not. I laughed at it. <laughs> Jay, for Maryland to have success going into the NCAA tournament, if you had to pick one thing, what do you think the X factor is? The X factor? I think, I think shooting. That you know, Maryland is, a, is what I consider to be a very good shooting team. They've got so many good shooters, and through the course of the season, they've not shot the ball as well as they're capable of. And up until recently, I think you know Aaron Wiggins, Daryl Morcel, Eric Ayala, they've been shooting the ball better. And uh, I look at it kind of like I'm a huge baseball fan. I look at it kind of like a great hitters that, that haven't been hitting as well. And what accounts for you know, not making shots to the level you're capable. But when Maryland, you know, that, that's kind of what I was uh, hopefully trying to convey before that you know, they haven't shot the ball well, as well as they're capable, and they're still, still winning. They're still atop the Big Ten, still, uh, you know, in, in the top ten in the country and capable of beating anyone. Uh, when they start knocking shots down, they've been doing that at a higher clip of late. Uh, as that continues, and, and if it continues into the NCAA tournament, there's nobody out there they cannot beat. Nobody. And uh, so that's, that's got to be a nice feeling going into the tournament, that they're healthy uh, and well-rested mentally and physically. Uh, they've got a, a great chance to, to do some damage once they get there.